the Galaxy S7 Edge. I know I have used this intro for Galaxy S8 too, but just the next day I have audio installed on my Galaxy S7 Edge, so yeah, I'm going to use it. It's been two years that I have owned this device and it's been pleasure to own this beautiful curved Galaxy S7 Edge. And after two years, it's finally time for the latest and the last update that this device is going to be getting, which would be the Android 8.0 Oreo. Finally, it's here. But before beginning towards the review, guys, please don't ask me when it's going to reach to your country. I seriously don't know. I don't work for these companies. I just have contacts and connections that I can install the softwares on my phone. And if you want the installation of this ROM, which is not the official way, please let me know in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe for it. And and let's just begin. Now Galaxy S7 Edge straight up bumps from experience version 8.0 to 9.0. There is no 8.1, no 8.5 which went past with Galaxy S8 and the Note 8. And there are tons of changes over here but I'm not going to dig in through them because it would take like almost half an hour. I'm just going to point out some of the major features which are like eye candy or just might be helpful for your day to day usage. And in short words, it's like a Galaxy Note 8 update. You get all the features from the Galaxy Note 8. So starting with the home screen, as you can see all the Galaxy S8 icons feels nice. Then again, the UI is just extremely similar to it you can swipe up for your apps then on to the left they are completely replacing the flipboard with bixby home now this is not the complete bixby which you get with the bixby voice assistant this is just a home so you can actually pin your favorite cards such as upcoming reminders schedule youtube i know not the most helpful feature that they have provided but better than flipboard to be honest then you get extra app shortcuts with samsung for example you only get like remove from home screen select items or just uninstall them from the app menu but with samsung apps and just which are optimal optimized you will get more options such as create a note groups which is nice now let's just go to the home screen settings as you can see the icons are a bit updated and also now you have a blur there are a few options added over here such as icon app badges so earlier if you have a notification from an app unless and until you open it icon badge wouldn't go show without a number which is like a stock android now if you clear the notification from your quick settings panel it will not show your number so that's a kind of neat feature then again show notifications which you can enable always quick open notification panel which is new then again bunch of the stuff is just the same you can now swipe down for the notification panel swipe down again then there is your quick settings panel so going to the menu pretty much the same looks completely like galaxy a8 if you go into any kind of folder you can now go to colors and just color your folder anything that you like and also adjust the transparency of it which is kind of neat feature in order to organize your home screen but if you go to search phone as like earlier you can now type anything and it will show you the info now for example there are also added cards over here for example, if I'm searching for anyone's contacts starting with A, I get all the contacts that I like and now they also have cards for example, as you can see it gives me a card for it and then again I can directly call the guy or just message him or get photos related to him. It is really intelligent. Then again I can do online results for him. Now coming to the quick setting panel, it's a bit darker shade than before and then again as the search finder has been updated into the apps menu, it's been completely removed through here. There is no way to search from your quick settings panel anymore. There are no new quick settings added over here there are just the same edge lighting gets a bit updated as well as some of the icons such as phone visibility smart wave performance mode but the tasks that they do are just completely same as before going to the apps they are basically the same they get a bit updated they are now much more circular going to the messages and stuff completely similar as before as they get updated through the galaxy apps but if you go to contacts it will give you a much more enhanced option such as your profile at the top just like this you can go to edit your profile picture and you get tons of animated ones over here you can also download more of them from the galaxy app store which is a neat feature i guess anyone owns a galaxy device in contacts list you will know it then again there are small little changes over here and there in each and every single app that you will like you get linkedin as standard feature the camera gets completely updated with the Galaxy Note 8 look. It also gets some of the features such as full screen images, just like that. It looks beautiful, but I seriously don't feel the need for it as this is not a 18.9 aspect ratio. I would definitely love to get my HDR button back over there, which is now inside over here in the settings. Almost nothing updated at all. You get floating camera button, which is from Galaxy A series. You get a all new game launcher where you can adjust your performance as before. And now you can also swipe up for discovering more of games. Now going to the settings where all the magic happens, First, let's start with the UI. The icons are again a bit more darker. You get a all new search bar over here, straight from Android 8.1. That small little right thing over here, your profile follows you everywhere. You can just tap it to view your own info. And now I will tell you all the features that had been added throughout all the sections of the settings. So starting with the connections, Wi-Fi, advanced. You get the only option for turn on Wi-Fi automatically. I don't know why it's necessary, but Samsung added it. You get a bit more enhanced separate app sound. This was actually available in some of the countries, but I guess with OS 
audio it gets a global reach go into the display if you go to auto brightness you get only options for reset your usage patterns once you do that gives you a much more natural effect than before if you go to edge screen directly you get edge panel options now there is nothing much over here edge panels have been updated you can always go to your edge panel handle which has been replaced with the handle settings i don't know why it was necessary but it's still the same but now you can just grab your edge panel and just move it around anywhere you like without visiting the settings so that's a neat feature if you are just accidentally doing it so let's just visit it by swiping from the right there you go there is your apps page then there are your contacts you can directly call and message them and coming to the task cage the icons are now circle which i seriously don't like cause it just differs you but it matches with the people's edge so yeah i don't care now going to the edit create app pairs for example you can just create an app pair by combining two apps there you go i have created memo and messages then chrome and internet if i want to compare anything i can go here chrome and internet and they both open no issue in that going to the edge lighting which is a very focused feature in android audio i don't know why samsung just reminded to pump this feature up by going down you can now adjust it in lots of ways for example the effect you like basic you have it multicolor glow glitter then again you can adjust the colors of it and also you can set it now for the app color for example orange for messages green for whatsapp blue for telegram i really like it on my galaxy s8 then again you can adjust transparency add width for it scrolling down you get block accidental touches so device actually knows when you are scrolling or just tapping anything if i put my thumb on the edge screen i am still able to scroll thanks to this feature enabled going to the advanced features going to the one handed mode the gesture is much more easier you also get galaxy set like nav bar you have direct share which has been bit tweaked for android audio and finally you get dual messenger from the galaxy note fe i guess by this feature you don't have to actually just download a modded whatsapp or anything if you have a sim related social media app you can just directly clone it over here it's also available in some of the chinese roms device maintenance is not touched at all it's just the same as before from android nougat going to the apps if you press this three dot menu you get more options such as special access now in special access you get tons of features such as we are helper services as before then some of the newer features such as allow app data saver on use premium text message services but you get an interesting feature which is known as picture in picture so picture in picture actually allows you to just grab the video and just float it around your home screen or any app that you like now you can use this feature in various apps such as duo or youtube google play services but for youtube you will need youtube red subscription which is like like tv but if you don't want to do that and if you want floating experience you can always use chrome go to youtube play anything and just play the site in desktop mode view it in full screen and just press the home button and it will pop up the video just like that now you can watch this video anywhere that you like you can enlarge it then again just pause or view it full screen very handy feature from android tv then coming to the lock screen security the features have a bit more simplified than before but in terms of security they don't do anything new always on display is not touched at all it's still the same going to the clock and face widgets you get clock style where you can adjust the always on display as well as the lock screen yeah it's a bit confusing than being easier but you do get some of the newer clocks such as this one pretty edgy then you can download custom then again you have calendar photo of your loved ones now going for the lock screen you also get this clocks now this one looks pretty nice and for the color you can also set it for the adaptive color so it will actually pick up your background color from the wallpaper and just invert it going to the face widgets you can allow for today's schedule and a next alarm just like always on display where you can scroll it around now you can also scroll your normal clock just like this infinitely you can open your calendar directly pretty nice touch you can also tap it once to just make it your screen saver now notification also gets a bit of a revamp where you can adjust the transparency of it just like this you can auto reverse the text color if you have some high contrast wallpapers you can hide content and stuff just like before samsung has really put in an effort for the lock screen you have google play protect just to keep your apps clean information about your security patch you have samsung pass and secure folder just like before but they get a new kind of setup as you can see it looks much beautiful than before like almost all of the apps get it edge screen always on display samsung has really put in effort in that part you get app permission monitor and just the normal stuff that you have from android nougat then jumping to the about phone which is also revamped it now shows both of your imi slots your serial number and your phone number so it might be handy if you have an issue with your phone and if you want to go to the service center but if you are a youtuber like me remind that going to the software info as you can see android 8.0 oreo finally 
I mean the performance is just amazing for a 2 year old device, experience version 9.0, security patch January 1, pretty old but I don't complain and that's it for the settings. Now coming to the keyboard, I guess that's how you searched my video. You get new bar over here at the top which will help you just access your quick shortcuts. You can also add a bunch of them just like this which would be a one handed mode clipboard, just your normal handy stuff and if you press this T over here, it will get replaced with the auto text and it works pretty fine once you have used your device for a couple of weeks. You can always disable it over here. Now let's just hop onto the settings. As you can see, they have made this much more easier. You can always go to smart typing for your typing needs and for the look and feel of it, earlier you can just adjust the size and layout of it. Now you can also enable high contrast keyboard. So if you have any kind of difficulty using it with your normal colors such as white and gray. Now just like the high contrast keyboards, people who have hard time watching at the screen, you can always go to settings, accessibility, vision and scrolling down. Samsung has added a color lens option where you can enable it and just cure your eye strain by adjusting to anything that you like such as blue, azure, cyan, spring green, green, yellow, just anything that you like. And that's pretty much it for the Android Oreo update for the Galaxy S7 Edge. I hope you guys enjoyed and please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this update. I hope you guys enjoyed and if you like my effort, please drop a like down there and see you in the next one. Peace.